Hello everyone and welcome to the third part of this tutorial series where we will be learning how to make cool looking organics using Axion. We will begin this tutorial with the easier type of organics and go increasing the difficulty until we get to the hardest one. So get ready to start. In this tutorial we will be covering only two tools mostly and how I use them to create organics. So to open the Axiom Editor mode we are going to press right shift and as always you will see all my key presses on the bottom right corner of the screen. So to start with the easy one we are going to use the path tool where you can see we have different options. The first two are for lines, the next one is a catenary which basically makes these sort of arches that you can invert and are very useful for hanging vines sometimes. And this is how the tool works, you can just click on the nodes to move the path around with the arrows in any specific direction or you can just move them freely. If you want to add another point you just click on the ground and then move it around and if you want for instance to add a point midair you can press E and this will extrude the point so you can click anywhere and then you can just move it from there. Once you have the shape that you want you hit enter and we have the path or curve created. We can make two types of lines and you might be wondering what's the difference between them. Well if you go to the second one you can see that we can change the radius of the line making it thicker or thinner and also I want you to pay attention to these options right here. We can have override block. Right now we are working with stone but if I click on this point and I go here I can change this to something like oak and we'll have a transition between these two. And the other one is override radius which is very powerful and we will Will be using this one a lot. It works in sort of the same way, you just click the point that you want to change and modify the radius. This allows us to go from thinner to thicker and so on. And this works for all the path types except for the first line that we saw. Now the two path types that we are going to use the most are Catmull Rom Spline and Bezier Curve. So let's go to Catmull first and as you can see when we add points it is going to create a curve. You can notice that the path is going to go through every point that we add. So if we move any node we can see exactly how we modify the path. Now the difference between that and the sear curve is that the curve is as you can see not going to go exactly through the points. In exchange is going to be way smoother which is something that might be very useful in certain scenarios or for the organics that you are creating so bear these options in mind. I consider that making a mushroom is the easiest type of organic mostly because they tend to have weird shapes so we can get away with many mistakes. Let's start with the bezier curve for the stem. I will add a few points and then modify the radius as we go up something like that. Once we are happy we hit enter and there we get a stem. Now for the mushroom cap we are going to use the shape tool. The shape tool has a lot of options, I'm not going to go through all of them but basically we can choose between solid or flat. Flat will allow us to create shapes like a disc, a plane or even an Archimedes spiral which is pretty cool. In this tutorial though we are not going to use those, we are going to only use solid shapes. As you can see we have many more options here like the sphere or the cube, the super sphere and so on. And the good thing of this tool is that we can rotate it in any angle allowing us to get very interesting shapes right from the start. If we click over advanced we can reset the rotations to get back the simple cube and if you want a specific rotation you can control click and add a specific value here. We can separate the dimensions as well to get a rectangular shape instead and even make a plane doing that. We can also make it hollow and now we get a box and we can have a bunch of other shapes like the super sphere, the torus, the tube and so on. I'll let you check them all by yourselves. Because now how can we use this to build the mushroom cap? Well to start we need a good classic round cap. So we can place a super sphere here and make it hollow and play around with the dimensions to make it flatter, longer and maybe rotate it just a bit. I think that's good so we hit enter. Now we go over to magic selection and reduce the limit which basically reduces the amount of blocks that we are going to select and we can go with right click and select the top part of the shape to make that mushroom cap. It doesn't have to be perfect, that's the fun and easy part of this. Once we are happy we press ctrl x and we can move this cap to the stem and take some time to place it somewhere where we like it and then we just hit enter. So there we go very easily we can get a very good looking mushroom already. But let's complicate it a bit and try to make a more interesting pointy shape. So for instance let's choose a cone or a pyramid shape could work as well and we now hit the metaball modifier. 
and let's place it on top of the base cap. The Metaball modifier makes it so that the cone will blend with the pre-existing surface that it has nearby. We can play with the parameters like the diameter of the cone or make it taller or rounder for example. We can also rotate it to arrive very quickly to a very interesting shape for our mushroom cap. Once we are happy with it, in all angles we hit enter and that's it. Very simple, there's not much more to this. If we want, we can get fancier and for instance go back to the path tool and make the bottom side slightly thicker by going around with the catmull spline and make sure we don't modify the shape too much. If we make any mistake we can use the smooth tool to fix certain areas if we don't like them. And at last, again the path tool, we can use it again to extend the stem to the inside of the mushroom. Then we just need to paint a little bit, I'm not going to get into the details of this, but if you want to learn all the options that you get in Axiom for painting, you can go to the first part of this tutorial series, but that's basically it, the easy organic is done. So let's move to the next one. I consider the trees to be a bit harder because they are a bit more restricted in terms of the shapes that we can use to make them look sort of realistic even for fantasy trees, but in essence we will be using the same tools. We will start with the path tool to create the tree trunk first, thicker at the bottom and thinner towards the top. We can make it curvy or straight, that depends on the style of tree that you want. In this case I'm not thinking of any type in particular and we'll see what comes out of it. Now that we have the main trunk we will create the main branches coming out of it. Since they are going to be thick, in most cases they have to go up to look realistic, but I will sort of lean them to one side so it can look like it's been affected by the wind or something. Depending on the tree size that you're going for, I divide these in different layers for the branches, not more than three in general. We have the tree trunk being the thicker one, then a second layer of thick branches, with them marking the general shape, and then a final third layer of smaller branches coming out of them to give some extra detail. Getting this shape right is the most important for the trees, if the trunk and branches don't look right then it's quite hard to make it look good with the leaves. So take your time and make sure that you are happy with the shape before moving to the next step. You can even help yourself with reference pictures, that's always useful, but right now I'm pretty happy with this shape. If we want we can even add some extra smaller details by hand, for instance we can try and make this one curl down. It doesn't really go with this style of tree but I'll keep it just for demonstration purposes. So let's now move to the following step, which is adding the leaves. Okay, so for the leaves we have many options and they will all yield different results. To start I'm going to show you the classical approach, which is to do it with world edit. Axiom is compatible with world edit, so you can have both like I do right now, and we can go ahead and grab a few food items to use as brushes. You could also use tools if you prefer that. You just have to type brush sphere and here we select percentages, for, for instance 70% of air and 30% of green wool and a size of 5. Then mask air so we don't affect the branches and we can make another one smaller in the cooked stick with radius 3. So we just go around and click on the tip of the branches and start filling the trees with leaves. With some time and patience you can quickly fill in the tree with all the leaves that you need. Using World Edit for this is a very good option. There are a few other techniques with World Edit, but this is an Axiom tutorial. So let's see how we can make leaves with the tools offered by Axiom. I have three different techniques to make leaves using Axiom that I think can yield very interesting and good looking results. So let's go through them. The first one is the fastest one, but also my least favorite. So if we go over to the shape tool and grab a super sphere with the metaball modifier, we want to create first a mask of only air, so we don't break the branches, and then we click with the metaball on the tip of the branches. Now just like with the mushroom cap, the sphere is going to try and merge with the existing surface, so you need to play with the positioning and the parameters until you get the shapes for the leaves that you want, and then basically repeat the process over and over until you fill in all the tree. Then of course we need to bring in some air between those leaves, for which we can use the noise painter and paint it with azalea leaves and air, just like we did in World Edit. Choose the noise pattern called splatter, this is the one closer to the one that World Edit uses, play around with the percentages, remember to mask only green wool and to tick mask surface off, and with that you can quickly paint the leaves. Then you can play around with the scale parameters as well and we end up with a result that is similar to the one that we got using World Edit. This is the easiest way of doing leaves with Axiom, it looks nice, but as I said, it's not my favorite one. 
The next technique is basically repeating the same thing that we did for the base of the mushroom cap. We can create some hollow supersphere midair, playing around with the parameters so they are different from one another. Let's create a few of them so I can show you how this works. Then we just magic select with a reduce limit and select the top half of this. Then we copy it with Ctrl C and go to the tree and place it where we see them fit. And repeat. You can rotate or even flip them with Ctrl F. This technique takes a lot more time than the previous ones because you need to make sure to find the right place for the leaves, but I think that in the end you can end up with a very beautiful and more stylized tree. This is the technique that I used to create this big tree, which is part of an upcoming video where I transform one of my oldest maps using Axiom. And as you can see, that tree has a lot of style and I love it. But the style of trees that we get from this technique is still not my favorite because I think they are a bit too cartoonish. So now I will show you a more complex variation to this technique that I think is better to get more organical shapes, while still holding over some control in the shape of the leaves. Since we are in a flat world, we are going to need first to create some random terrain. So let's grab the rock tool and real quick drop something over here. Let's make it smooth. Of course, if you are on a regular world, you can just use any piece of terrain that you found around. But why do we need some terrain? Well, we are going to use the shape tool as before, but this time with the metaball modifier, we are going to make sure we only mask air, and then we place the sphere or any shape that we choose over the terrain on different places. This will create leaves that have certain random aspect to their shape dictated by the random terrain below, which I really like. You can make them taller, rotate them, and if I want it to be leaning to a side, I can place it to the side of a cliff like this. Once you have a few of them, then we just need to select them, copy them, and bring them over to the tree, and spend some time placing them where we think they are going to look right. This is the technique that I use for this another tree, and I absolutely love it. Of course, the more time you spend on your tree, the better it will end up looking, and in fact, you can use and mix any of the techniques that I've shown, and probably there are a lot of more techniques, these are just the ones that I use. And that's basically it. Then we can go back and add a few more smaller branches where we think it's missing, and to finish the tree we need to paint it. Again, I'm not going to get into the details, but I will use the noise painter again. And we can go ahead and use a tool mask to add, for instance, some melons below some of the leaves, and perhaps some hanging vines made out of ferns and propagules, I don't know. Just a little bit of extra details. And that's the final result. We can keep tweaking it, we can keep adding details, but you get the idea of how the process works. Of course, this is a huge tree, if you want a smaller one, you just need to do the same, but with a smaller size of things for the path tool and for the shapes, that's up to you. And that's it for the medium level organic. Now let's move to the last and harder one, the dragon. Before moving to the final one, if you have come this far, please consider liking the video and subscribing. That's all, thank you. Now yes, building a humanoid or animal-like organic is the hardest, and why? Because there are not many tools that can help us do things faster, which means that a lot of the work needs to be done by hand and block by block. So we are going to attempt to create a dragon like the one from the film in Spirited Away. I chose two reference pictures for that and tried to follow those shapes. And that's my first tip, get a reference picture or a drawing at least of what you want to build. In that way you make sure that you get the shapes and proportions right, otherwise you might end up with a reindeer that looks like a cow. That never happened to me, I don't know what you are talking about. Now, for this type of dragon, which its body looks like a big snake, we can start once again by using the path tool. So very patiently, with the cut mool we are going to try and get the shape of the body right. Here it might be better to use the Vezier curve to make it smoother, but I like to have more control over the curve when moving the points. Then I can always come back and smooth weird areas with a smooth tool if I need to. And okay, I think that's a pretty good shape for the main body. So up next we need to give this dragon arms and legs. Again, using the path tool and following the reference picture, I will try to create those. First up front, these ones are shorter. And the way I think of this is as if the dragon was flying in a certain direction, where the arms and hands would be leaning to, and play around with that until you get something that you are happy with and makes sense to you. The same process goes to the legs at the back, but these are a bit longer. Later on I will come back and add the claws with a similar process. On top of that we can add a smaller curving tail at the end, and I think that's a nice touch. Alright, up next the dragon will need a head. For that the shape tool works really well. We can play around with some super spheres using the metaball modifier and playing around with the positioning and rotation until we get a shape that makes sense. Again, similar to the tree, make sure you get these basic shapes and proportions right, 
otherwise it is going to be really hard to fix them after adding the details. The dragon from Spirited Away has some hair on the back, so we are going to create that using the weld tool, and we are going to choose a cube shape and a very small size, so very careful we are going to paint over the top side of our dragon with that. It doesn't have to be perfect, but we can use this to round up the shape a bit more in certain areas, and we can also leave some spots empty, and that's it. Now, to make the eyes and mouth on the face, there's no tool that can help us in this scale. So we have no other option than doing it by hand. And there's not a lot that I can teach you here, just a lot of trial and error, practice, follow a drawing, the reference picture, and work always with placeholder blocks. It's easier to fix, and if you end up with something that looks decent with those blocks, then it's probably going to look good when you replace them for the real ones. The dragon will also need horns and ears, so first I am marking with orange wool where I want these two things to go. Since they are very close to each other, I need to separate them. So on the back of the line I will start symmetrically from one another the horns, for which I use the path tool with the DDA line, and again make sure it fits the orientation of the dragon and the head. With both horns in place, I can now go ahead and build the ears by hand. This can take again a lot of time, but I like how they turned out. In fact, they ended up being my favorite part of the build, so if there's anything to learn here, is to enjoy the process. I copied it and flipped it to the other side, and that's it for the ears. For the whiskers on the side of the nose, they are very easy to do with the path tool. I went back to the arms and added the second part with the path tool, and then I took the time to build the claws by hand. I really struggled with this part, but I think it ended up looking quite decent. One last trick that I can show you here is how to create maybe tiny pieces of hair on top of the hair that we had already created. For that, we can build those pieces somewhere else, like here for instance, then copy it and press Ctrl+P p to save them in the Blueprints folder. Once we have all of them, we can go to the Stamp tool and go to Add Blueprint. There, automatically, we can add all the blueprints that we want, and with the tool mask, make sure to paint only on top of the light blue, to add those tiny pieces of hair in certain areas. The tool will automatically rotate the blueprints to give them a certain randomness that is very good. The only thing that we are missing is to paint it. Again, if you don't know how the noise painter or the gradient painter works, I have to point you to my other tutorial, but here I chose simply a palette that goes from white to light blue to paint the body. I made the hair look like gold using some coral blocks, and for the whiskers I used ochre frog light to make sure they shined in the dark. I also used some light blocks to make the hair bright in the night, and that's it, that's the dragon completed. Again, you could spend more time in the details like in the tree, and I'm sure the result would be better, but the tools that we have in Axiom so far can help us to create organics like this in a couple of hours of work, so I really think it's worth trying them out. But anyways, let me know what you think of this in the comments below, and don't forget to leave a like, and thank you so much for watching, this has been Calden, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye!